start. What's up, everyone? It feels like it's been about uh, two months since uh, we did a live stream here. Has it only been a week, Billy? Has it been a week? Is that it? It's insane. It feels like a very, very long time. For those of you that have been watching, I put out a lot of videos lately. You're like, man, how many videos are Rick going to put out? So my latest video, though, is my interview with Pat Metheny, which was five years in the making. And uh, it was just such a pleasure and honor to get to interview him at the uh, power station in New York City. Um, I went up a week ago, Sunday, I think it was and interviewed him on Monday. And uh, he was just so gracious with his, uh, uh, you know, just to do the interview and play guitar and everything. And I wanted to talk, you guys see my Pat Metheny guitar, actually, it's a, it's a signed uh, Ibanez model, not the model that he was playing in the video. That's a new prototype that he has that, that is not out yet. This is old, old guitar that I, um, that I've had for a while. I, I, uh, won it in an auction actually that was uh, for for benefit um anyway so uh, i wanted to talk about today so i have a new um discount on my uh, we're doing a bundle today just for today's stream that is my ear training course and my quick lessons uh guitar course for those of you that want to get both it's over $100 off together. You buy, you purchase it together, and it's uh, the discount code is RB250. Now, you can purchase my ear training course just by itself. It's 45% off, or my quick lesson, or my um, Beato book bundle, which is 65% off. So that's like the biggest discount I do. But this thing with the bundling them together, if you're waiting to get that or wanting to get both, this is the time. It's a really big, um, it's like, Ten dollars more or something than, than the ear training would be with a discount or twenty dollars more something like that um, anyway so that's uh, uh, like I said before the, my courses are to help people become better musicians that's why I do music theory book my ear training course and my guitar lesson course so uh, but I want to talk about some of the uh, one of the tunes that Pat talked about at the end of the uh, at the video if you guys haven't watched it um, about probably an hour. The video is an hour and 46 minutes long. But he gets to the song James. Let me get my eraser here in case I make mistakes. I'm trying not to make any mistakes, but um, I've written the chord changes out to James. For those of you that don't know, James is off Pat's off-ramp record. Um, and I quickly reviewed it, so I'll probably screw it up here, but uh, it's like a... Um, it's, yeah. Okay, so I reviewed it for about five minutes before this, but yeah. Um, so it starts out the chords here on the uh, on the chart here. So D major seven, G major seven. That's just an inversion. Then to A over C sharp, B minor seven, G major seven, F sharp minor seven, G major seven, F sharp minor seven. Then uh, D major seven, G major seven, then a quick minor two five, C sharp minor seven flat five. It'd be like a. Where are you going? Uh, right uh, to E minor, uh, so, um, to B minor. Then he does those fills, which really are going. Basically going between the G major seven, F 
F, uh, G major 7, F sharp minor 7, G major 7, F sharp minor 7, G major 7, G over A, then D. Now the bridge is the thing that I really want to talk about. So this is all in the key of D major. We'll do a quick analysis of this. Let me take my guitar off and I want to talk about kind of Pat's approach that he was talking about uh, over the bridge, which is difficult for a lot of people to improvise over. So um, starts out, you got the one chord here in the key of D to the four chord, right? A is the five chord, A over C sharp. A over C sharp is the same as A, it's just inverted. Then uh, the, the uh, B minor is the six chord. Okay, so you have a one, four, five, six progression. Then you have a four, um, F sharp minor is three, four, three, four, three, then the one, four, then this is a two, five into B minor. And so, so you really, this is like a, you could say this is a, um, this is the seven chord in the key of D, or you can say it's a two minor seven flat five to a five, seven flat nine to one, or to six. This is the six chord in, uh, in the key of D major, okay? This is what we would call a secondary dominant usage, but putting a little minor two five to the six chord, okay? Then once again, your four, uh, four to three, four to three, four, and this is five. The G over A is really like an A11 chord, so it's really acting as the five chord back to the one, okay? Now the bridge, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. You start on the five chord, then this uh, F sharp seven over A is a five of six. Okay, so that would be five of six. All this theory is in my Beato book. All of this theory is in my ear training course to teach you how to hear secondary dominant chords. That's what those are. So that's five of six to six. This is uh, five of five, or I'm sorry, this is a, a five seven to one, right? We're in the key of D. Um, then this is a 5-7 of 3, going to the th 3 chord, secondary dominant. Then we have 5-5, um, five of five going to the 5 chord. Then we have um, uh, uh, A over G, so this is really like a G uh, Lydian sound. So what is it called? It's a 4 chord, right? Then the 1 chord, 6 uh, then this is just the five chord. This G over A to A, G over A to A, that sound is really just the five chord. So I'll play it for you, that, that part. So <clears throat> let's talk about the bridge. Okay, so you got the five chord. Then this would be, uh, um, this is like F sharp seven, um, but in first inversion. Then to B minor seven. And then A over C sharp, okay, so it's like an A7, because he plays that note G in there, which gives you the seven. And then there's your five of, of, uh, of three. And that's five of five. That's like e, E7 to the five. Then you got. So that's like a, a very common thing to do. Um, what well, James Taylor would do this. This would be a common chord progression in the 70s here. But let's talk about the approach here because this idea of secondary dominant chords is something it's in the first chapter of my Beato book. Uh, so the t secondary dominant chord is a five of the five chord that you're typically going to, okay? So A major, right, the five chord. Then you have a five of six going to six. Then you have five to one, five of three to three, okay? So they, all, these, um, all these chords, these secondary dominant chords, are related to the primary chords because they're a fifth away. Okay, so they're just, they're like momentary modulations. And the tricky thing is, is when you're improvising over these, right? So you got, and this is one of the things that Pat is a master of, 
melodically, how to play over these kind of progressions, right? So he was talking about arpeggiating or, you know, he was demonstrating using just notes of the chord, right? So you get A, a major. So I played, then I played. So I played um, A major. Um, there's your B minor. I did. This is this, right? And then there's your E, this. Uh, so if you arpeggiate the chords or if you just practice, playing that I'm very simply outlining the changes but you can hear the changes of that bridge going by there so when I go to that second chord that F sharp 7 that's going to be minor you have to be able to go a bass player or anything you should be able to hear the sound of the chord changes by the way that they're outlined and this is a thing to, to practice for any improviser or for any melody writer okay if you're writing a melody to a song some of the things that you should really keep in mind of is that you don't want to double the root or double the bass note okay so you want to you want to try to to uh, not have two bass notes in a row in your melody same thing is here. You don't want to just be playing from root to root to root, or you don't want to necessarily just play a scale that fits over the entire progression, because then, as Pat was talking about, you're just playing above it. A lot of jazz players, we use things like pentatonic scales that will fit over an entire progression, but they don't really describe the chord progression. You can't describe the chord progression of the bridge here with just one pentatonic scale. You can't. You actually have to play over the chord changes, meaning describe them. Here you can play in the key of D major. The notes of D major will work. Will it sound good? Well, it depends on which ones you play over which chords. That's the thing is that that's how you, where you have to really develop your ear. You're, you're, you should be able to, this is why the ear training stuff is so important. Pat can hear where those chords are going. Um, when I hear the chord progression, I know what that chord progression is. As soon as I hear it, I'm like, oh, that, yeah, that's like five of three to three, or that's a five of six to six, whatever. I, I, I recognize those secondary dominant chords instantly when I hear them. My ear training course teaches you how to do that. Not only that, but then you have to learn uh, where all those arpeggios are and stuff and how to connect them. That's where learning your instrument, no matter what you're playing, you can be playing guitar, you can be playing piano, you can be playing saxophone. One of my questions to him was, why is it so hard for musicians to play over straight major chords, especially jazz musicians? And he laughed about it. He was like, I said, it's like, uh, it's like jazz kryptonite or something, right? Because Pat started out like a folk player, like, like I did, like most of people I know that are my age, playing... I played America and John Denver and, you know, things like that until I learned some more sophisticated chords. Then I could play Motown tunes and and then I learned jazz chords and I could play, you know, Steely Dan and things like that, right? So, um, uh, uh, but learning your, your neck and understanding where these chord progressions are going and how to lead there, there with your ear. Once again, let me tell you that this discount I'm having today, it's the first time that we've ever done this. You get two license codes with this. If you buy my ear training slash quick lessons bundle, 
you get two different license codes and it's like a hundred dollars off on it it's about 20 bucks more than just buying the ear training course so if you're interested in getting it we're thinking about getting my quick lessons guitar course it's a good time to do it or 45 percent off same same thing my you're just my ear training course or just my beato book bundle okay it's 700 page pdf uh but this is where you learn all the theory for this stuff okay because you can't divorce the theory of this from the ear part because to develop as a musician what you really want to be able to do is to be able to hear these things recognize what they are reproduce them by playing like you know uh, that I mean I listened to this for 20 seconds before I came on today I mean I played this years and years ago I haven't played James but I Billy I had to listen to it right mm -hmm. I had to listen to it because I couldn't remember exactly how, um, the the ending part of it where it goes uh, the that part I, I couldn't remember if it went to B, B minor which it did um, but uh, the but then when you get to the improvising part, then it's like really you got to know your instrument to get over those chords. You can hear me playing those five to one cadences, right? It's kind of like in my, for those of you who have seen my, uh, the uh, circle of fifths things. trying to connect it without stopping without even thinking trying to connect all these five to one cadences so I'm going like five one five one five one five one five one five like that right it sounds like Bach right those those kind of cadences this would be a D7 do do da da do do da 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 C F I'm just playing over that cycle of fifths. That exercise is in my Beato book, by the way. Also in the ear training course, I teach you how to recognize these things, how to recognize when you have these types of cadences. So if you're listening to Bach, it's the same thing. You can recognize where the harmonic progression is going. Like what is, okay, what is Bach playing there? Oh, he's doing this, he's doing that. So it makes learning the stuff a lot easier. It's funny when my son Dylan was taking piano lessons. He took piano lessons for about three and a half years or so, and, and he hated it. But anyways, um, he, ne he never wanted to learn how to read. He was like, all right, I know all the notes. Just show me the fingerings, right? <laughs> and so, because um, he, could he could recognize the stuff. He could recognize what the notes were and, and everything. It's just like, okay, how do you put, how do, what fingers do I play on the notes? Because I know what they are and everything. Well, that's kind of the same thing. If you get you once you develop your ear, you start to recognize. Okay, I recognize that chord progression. Now, how do I play it? That's the next thing, right? So you got to learn where the chords are. You could take this chord progression on James and instead of going. Um, do that really anywhere because I could play there 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 so right there I'm playing all these triads and seventh chords because uh, I know where all those are on the neck because I've practiced them a million times right so I've been doing this for 50 years not 50 years 1975 I started playing or so so um how many years ago was that? It's not 50 years. It's close. 45 years I've been playing. Um, and I started learning these things. And, and I'm still learning stuff, right? I'm still 
I'm still uh, practicing all the time to try and keep my chops up and everything. It's hard. This is, you know. Uh, so right there, I'm I'm hearing those. So you can hear the chord changes as I'm as I'm improvising over those. The uh, the bridge there. It's really hard to do though. It is. It's hard to kind of weave your way through there. And I think it's. Uh, for this kind of stuff, it's the most fun thing to do as an improviser is to learn how to navigate through chord changes like this. This is my favorite stuff. I used to love to play over things like that. Like Pat says, he would practice playing this th this in all 12 keys. And, th and it really gets confusing. I mean, you got to really know, uh, you got to develop your ear to be able to recognize where all those cadences are and know those chord progressions. This is what Nashville guys do. This is what the Nashville numbering system is. They recognize what all the chords are in their relations. Like this would be one, four, five, right? Six, four, three, five, three. And they would say that. And the guys would be like, okay, okay cool. We're playing D. You know what? The singer, um, they can't really hear it in D. Let's do it in D flat. Okay, fine. Then you just transpose it down half step, right? So it's then D flat, then G flat, and so on and so forth. Oh, that's, you know, it's still too high. Let's go down to the key of C. Okay, and then you're like C major 7, F major 7. Then you just transpose the whole thing down another step because you know the relationships. It's all about relationships. This is what ear training is about. It's understanding the relationships from one note to the next. If I play from, from C sharp to E, that is a minor third interval. If I play from A to C sharp, it's a major third. If I play from A to E, it's a perfect fifth interval. So I'm hearing those intervals right there. As soon as I hear them, I can play them instantly. I know where they are. So conversely, when I hear them somewhere else, I also know where they are. This is kind of how this whole trick of ear training, which is really not a trick, it's just practice. This is how this stuff works. The more you practice this stuff, the better you get at it. You can begin to recognize these things. So it's combining the, 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 um, the relationship from one note to the next, okay, the, the, the intervals from one note to the next, and then also developing your, you're going to hear this again, your uh, vocabulary of recognized sounds, okay? If I hear this sound here, I know that's a 13 flat 9 sound. So, so, so I'm thinking, so I know that that's a dominant diminished sound, right? Or if I hear this chord, A D, a D ma augmented major seventh chord as for as opposed to D major seven. I love that sound. It's a beautiful sound. Love those sounds like that. Those augmented sounds and everything. Beautiful. It's beautiful to my ear, anyways. But if you're just jamming on a Grateful Dead tune or you're jamming on a John Mayer song or jamming on a, you know, uh, Dua Lipa song or whatever you're jamming on, you can jam on these things. Once you know, once you hear what the progressions are, you should be able to just improvise over them on whatever instrument you are. And you should be able to figure them out on, a, you know, one listening or two listenings where you're not just kind of hunting around. Okay, where's the first chord? You know, you should be able to really hone in on it. Okay, I hear this. I hear this. I hear that. That. Da, 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 da. Right? Right there is, is just instantly knowing, okay, I know where all those chords are. I know what the sounds are. I can hear a first inversion seventh chord. I can hear a, a secondary dominant resolution. These things, they're not that sophisticated of techniques. 
but it's getting them under your fingers and in your ear, right? And getting under your ears, fingers, or whatever you want to say in your mind's eye and being able to recognize those. Um, so that's what, you know, the courses that I've developed for you guys that I've developed for the last, I've been working on since I was a college professor back in 1987 when I taught ear training and I taught music theory. I wrote my Beato book starting in 1988 and I've revised it four times, right? So um, all the theory that you need to know, you really could learn in about two years of study if you study every day. Everything about music theory you can learn. It's all in my book too. Uh, if you don't read and you're a guitar player, I have tab in there too, but there's also notation if you play other instruments. But, um, uh, and then the ear training course I've been developing forever, but I taught ear training when I was teaching college 40 years ago. How many years ago? 1987 was that? 87 to 92, I was a college professor. So a long time ago. And um, I was, uh, I was an okay teacher. I was an okay teacher, but because I was only a couple years older than the students when I began, um, I um, it it was um, I had not encountered teach I had not been a teacher for very long, so I it was difficult me it was difficult for me to learn how to teach people that didn't learn the way I did. So I needed to develop strategies, especially for ear training. Theory is one thing, but ear training is another thing that is really, to, people need different ways to hear things. Like I can't hear a major third. And so I would develop strategies, different strategies for different students for how to hear that, and which I have in my ear training course. Um, I have exercises for, you know, things like complete the chord, things you can do at the piano that before you even get into the course, which is a program that keeps track of your progress. Um, these are things that you, that are lifelong practice. You never are done with this stuff. And Pat was, Pat's like the best guitar improviser I've ever heard. And he's practicing all the time. When I showed up at the studio, okay, so we were supposed to start at the in, start the interview at two. So I thought to myself, Okay, I'm going to get there at 10. I had the studio. I, it was at the power station. The reason I got the power station is Pat made records there as part of Berkeley College of Music. So I called the people at Berkeley, told them I was bringing Pat in. And um, so Pat was going to, the interview was going to be at 2. I'm like, I'm going to go there. I'm going to get a notebook. I'm going to write down questions I'm going to ask Pat. I went to the CVS. I bought a notebook with a pen. I go in there. I go up to Studio B where we were. I open the door and there he is right there. And I was like, oh, what's up? And he's like, oh, hey, Rick. And so all my prep time, and I think he was getting there because he always warms up for four hours. That's just his thing. He practices four hours before every gig. He talks about that in there, you know. And I think I kind of screwed up his practice time. But, but you know, and then I didn't get to write down any questions, so I was winging it, although I knew I knew what, what, what I wanted to ask him anyway. As long as, as as long as I have my first question, what I want to ask, I, then I just listen to what they say and I react to that. So that's kind of my whole interviewing process is based on that. Anyways, um, so, so that was the thing. That was a real highlight of my, uh, you know, to me, this is the best thing I've done on my YouTube channel with the interview with Pat. I'm very proud of my interview with Ron Carter that I did two weeks ago. If you haven't seen that, I thought that was equally amazing. Ron is the most brilliant bass player. Played with Miles in the 60s and is on 2,000, 2,200 records. He is a legend. Oh, my God. It was in such an honor to interview Ron as well. Man. And for those of you that are really into this stuff, I interviewed Gary Burton, who Pat played in his band. I interviewed Gary two years ago down in Florida, down in Miami. I went down there to interview him. And, uh, you know, and I want to continue to do these kind of interviews. So, um, and I was, and I'm very proud of the, of it. And, um, uh, and I really appreciate you guys watching it and all the incredibly great comments. Oh my God. Unbelievable. It's, it's, uh, you know, I wish that my mom and dad were around to see this. You know, frankly, um, I wish they were around to <laughs> meet my wife and kids, too. Um, anyway, so discount code for today's live stream is RB250. If you want to support the channel, you can always donate or become a member of the Beato Club. But this deal we've never offered before. 
you get both license codes when you buy this uh, buy the bundle with my ear training course and my quick lessons guitar course which is five hours of guitar lessons based off my Instagram. If you don't follow, follow me on Instagram, follow me at rickbeato1. So I do these little one minute lessons. I do them three, four times a week. Just I, do, I just did one just before we started here, I put it up I, and it was about improvising, about uh, a warm up thing that I like to do. And, um, and I've taken these lessons, these quick lessons and I've made five hours of guitar lessons based off simple concepts too. Very simple concepts, but they're, some of them are sophisticated, they're not simple, but a lot of them are simple. The one today was simple. Anyways, you guys are the best. I love it. I, you know, the fact that you'll show up here on a Saturday afternoon is, is and, and, uh, and keep coming to my channel. It's amazing. I, uh, you know, I never, I, I always appreciate everything from all of you. So uh, thank you so much for that. If you haven't seen the Pat interview, please check it out. All right, thank you. Have a great week. Go to my store. Get the bundle today.